Hey guys, I'm back. One day it's going to stop raining here and I'll actually be able to go back outside. Uh, but until then, I guess I have another little uh, video to inflict upon you. I've been uh, continuing to think about the uh, grading criterion whether and how to use guiding logs as discussed in the previous video and how, to, how best to use the subframe uh, selector script in Pix Insight. There are several in the in the uh, various discussion boards. There are various grading criteria that are used in the uh, subframe uh, sub uh, subframe selector script. And I just wanted to go over one of them that I think I'll be using uh, going forward. First, all right, we have case A, which is a perfectly round star, something we're all looking for, right? And case B. A very eccentric star. However, the maximum diameter is equal to the diameter of the perfectly round star. Which one of these is the better subframe? Well, if you think about it a little bit, you might agree with me that case B is a better uh, image because we're getting the same resolution in the y direction but better resolution in the x direction. So, in other words, just keying on eccentricity is not the best way to go in terms of selecting and defining image quality. We need to be thinking about the uh, maximum diameter of, of the circle or the maximum axis of the uh, ellipse. And that's what we ought to be thinking about, I think, in terms of defining and grading our subframes. Well, PixInsight has different ways of measuring the full width half maximum uh, and various tools for doing this. In the uh, dynamic PSF uh, function, they, can, they do provide an elliptical fitting routine which provides us with the full width half maximum in the Y direction or the maximum uh, direction and the full width half maximum in the uh, minimum direction. All right. Now, the subframe uh, selector script, however, only gives us one value for the full width half maximum. So we don't know what the maximum value is. It's the, the value they give for the same star is between the minimum and the maximum values. So we want a grading criterion based on the maximum full width half maximum. This is going to be a complicated thing to say over and over again. Uh, but the subframe selector script is only giving us one number. How do we get past that? Well, here's what's going on. In the subframe uh, selector script, essentially what they're doing is taking the results out of the dynamic PSF function. That script does rely on the dynamic PSF function, so it has access to the uh, FMHM or FWHMX and Y, and basically what it's doing is taking the area of the ellipse and comparing it and setting, defining this full width half maximum for the area of an equivalent circle that has the same area. And meanwhile, the uh, subframe selector is also telling us what the eccentricity is, which is just the minimum of these two numbers divided by the maximum of these two numbers squared. All right, take that, subtract from one, take the square root, and boom, there's your eccentricity. So we have the eccentricity and we have uh, the full width half maximum of equivalent area circle that goes with the ellipse. So all we have to do is do a little math and we can come up with the maximum full width half maximum, this guy here, as simply this formula. They take the full width half maximum from the subframe selector script and divide it by the fourth root of 1 minus the eccentricity squared. And now this can be put in as a weighting function for our subframes in the subframe selector script. Now here's how I'm using the subframe selector script. I start off with the image. I define a subregion, subframe region, and in the subframe selector script entry, I type in this the bounding box here, the upper left, the upper corner here. All right, so this is the x value, this is the y value, so that's these two numbers, and then we have the width and the height of the box. Um, and then I have the equation that I just mentioned for the weighting function, and then we have an approval, weight less than 3.7 arc seconds, for example. But we'll come back to that in a second. But basically, here's what I'm doing. I'm using the pre-processed and register frames. Now, if you read some of the boards, they'll tell you, and maybe the documentation in PixInsight itself, it'll tell you that don't use the registered frames. And I agree with that if you're using the entire frame because with registered frames, you can have some frames that are offset or rotated relative to the reference frame, and you'll end up with large black regions which will screw up 
the uh, statistics that it's calculating for the stars. However, if you select the registered frames and you select a region, as I have identified here, that's common to every frame, then I believe if you do this and get a decent number of stars in here, then you'll have the same stars being considered by the subframe selector script in every single image and you'll get a more consistent measurement of the average uh, full width half maximum values and eccentricity. So this is what I'm trying out for now. And then I just type in that formula into the expressions region in the subframe selector box and again we have the weighting uh, function. And then you just press the uh, measure button and let it go and it may take a while for a large number. Okay so here are the results of 278 one minute long exposures on M96 that I completed uh, recently and what you can see on the vertical axis are, is the weighting function output from the subframe selector based on that formula that we just put in and you can see that the maximum full width half maximum hovers around about three arc seconds for a good bit of the imaging time I left at this time to go to a different target and then came back to it on the other side of the meridian and um, also later in the morning around one o'clock in the morning and you can see at this point is when I really got my best one minute uh, of imaging time on this target and of course up here I had a worst one minute of imaging time but in general there was this trend of getting worse and worse uh, full width half maximum as the uh, target was tracked from the meridian down to the horizon and as morning approached and this is about a little after four o'clock in the morning uh, for these images here so um, at least it looks like a fairly consistent measurement but let's take a look at the best and worst here in just a second another way to look at this data is to uh, develop a cumulative density function for the data and basically all this uh, all this I'm doing here is is uh, taking all of the images that, uh, for example, are less than 2.8 arc seconds. So if I drew a line here and said 2.8 arc seconds, there's a certain number of images I have. Divide that by the total number of images I have, and that comes out uh, to be about 10%. Likewise, if I said, well, at 3.5 arc seconds, I count all these images, divide by the total, and at 3.5 I come out to be around 65 percent and so that's the way to interpret this uh, S curve here 60 percent of the images for example have a maximum full width half maximum less than about 3.4 arc seconds alright we'll come back to that graph now here's the comparison of the best case and the worst case image now here I've used the dynamic point spread function to uh, calculate the values for this star and the same star in the in the uh, in the uh, uh, worst case image. And you can see here we have a well a decent circle. It has an eccentricity of 0.42, which is not a circle, but still pretty good. All right, for me it's excellent. It's pretty good. Um, and over here in the worst case image, I got an eccentricity of 0.67, which is pretty poor. And you can also tell that this diameter here the maximum full width half maximum is quite a bit larger than the maximum full width half maximum over here and here you can compare 2.52 arc seconds to 4.61 so it's these values here on the bottom that are being calculated using that formula from these two values so these two values are what we plug into that formula to get this okay now what's our limit on the full width half maximum well that's a tough one um, I could say if I selected 3.6 arc seconds as my limit for my approval anything higher than that I throw it out any image that has a higher maximum full width half maximum than 3.6 I throw out and then I keep all the others and basically what this curve tells me is that I would keep about 70 percent of my images if I selected this as my limit but is that really how we want to select the limit there are a number of factors here that go into that. Um, starting off with where you live. All right, if you live at the top of a mountain with dry, stable air, then your curve, your equivalent version of this curve for you, is going to be pulled far to the left, and you'll be seeing perhaps 
maximum full width half maximums on the order of 2.6 to 3 or something of that work nature. So you'll have a you'll have a smaller maximum full width half maximum. Um, so where do you live matters. Where I live, I've got a good bit of humidity, a good bit of upper air disturbance, and so I'm probably contending with a bit more challenging uh, scene conditions here uh, than in some other places. The quality of your equipment also matters. Uh, let's face it, some equipment does a better job of guiding and costs more, but does a better job. Now, I guess you want to be careful here because if your scene conditions don't permit high accuracy uh, tracking, then you could waste a lot of money buying really expensive equipment and never realize the benefit of it because of the scene conditions. So that plays a, these two here are, are uh, kind of important. There's no point in spending more money for equipment if you're not getting the use, uh, the value out of that equipment. Another issue is quality of your technique. And most of the videos on my uh, YouTube channel here go to trying to improve the quality of my technique and understand where I can make an improvement, where does it make sense to, to push the boundary a little bit. In some cases, perhaps I try to improve the quality of the equipment by sending it out to be hyper-tuned and making little adjustments to it. Uh, so these are little things that I have uh, control over. I can't really change where I live right now. I'm not that interested in buying uh, much higher quality equipment given where I live. Uh, so I'm sort of playing around in this little oval here trying to improve my technique to pull this red curve to the left basically is what I'm trying to do. And finally, uh, you get done with all this, you throw out a bunch of frames, you keep hopefully most of the frames, stack those, do the processing, do you come up with an image that you like? Let's face it, we're not into this business trying to compete with the Hubble Space Telescope. So we're not going to come up with the best images that are out there. So this is all about uh, personal satisfaction. We spend a lot of time, perhaps a lot of money, uh, trying to get the best images possible, but we're not ever going to compete with a space telescope. So the quality is a highly subjective assessment, and you've got to decide for yourself what constitutes a good image. And uh, I suppose the good thing about this hobby is just trying to work in this box to deal with these two limitations so that you get something you like here. And so this number that we ultimately pick for our limit, that's a highly personal uh, and uh, uh, limit that you each of you have to decide based on all these factors. Um, in essence, this curve here gives us a hint, uh, regardless of what you think is how you judge these parameters over here. We don't want to be out at night and decide that, well, I'm only going to, I only want uh, images with a full width half maximum of 2.4 arc seconds. Great. Okay. Now I'm throwing away 99% of my images. Well, I'm not going to be into this hobby if I'm throwing out, if I'm wasting 99% of my time. So I'm more interested in living up here at the 0.7 to 0.9 region. And the shape of this curve helps us figure that out. Once this, when this curve is hitting this slope here, you want to push out as far as you can. And then when it starts to bend over, again, a bit subjective judgment here, but when it starts to bend over horizontal, that's where you want to start cutting out the, uh, uh, cutting out those images because it's, they're getting bad fast. All right. So I think in my case, I could push up to 3.8, I'm sorry, to a, a 0.8 here or 3.8 arc seconds. Um, and I could live perhaps with uh, on bad imaging days with something on the 3.4, 3.5 arc second range. So for me, for my equipment, recognition that on this particular day when I collected these data, this was particularly poor guiding performance. Um, in other words, I expect my version of this curve on other days to be pulled slightly to the left. Um, I'm kind of targeting for myself something in, in this region here uh, as a ideal, uh, I guess, cutoff point for f uh, future images. So where are we on this? Well, the eccentricity alone, though it's quite apparent by eye when looking at uh, images, uh, the eccentricity alone is, can be a very misleading uh, indicator of image quality. You know, my typical RA 
pointing error performance is worse than my deck performance. But if I did get better than average deck performance, that's going to produce a more eccentric star. But in fact, it's a better image quality, at least in the deck direction. So uh, I don't want to rely on eccentricity. Uh, eccentric stars are characterized by two full width half maximum numbers. There's a maximum and a minimum and it may be the X or the Y depending on how the star is oriented. Um, and one of these is the maximum and one of them is the minimum. Um, but I'd prefer to have an image approval criterion based on the maximum full width half maximum. I don't want to get tied up in looking at eccentricity alone. Uh, but the subframe selector script is only giving us one value. However, we found out that uh, that value it's giving us is actually a function of the uh, two uh, full width half maximums for an elliptical star and it's quite easy to convert those numbers using the eccentricity to come up with the maximum full width half maximum uh, as a uh, as a grading criterion and uh, now where you select the approval limit uh, is a personal choice based on a number of factors equipment where you live your technique uh, what your images look like. For me, I think I, it looks like I'm trending towards around the 3.5 to 3.7 arc second uh, range for a an approval criterion. So that's all I have for you tonight. I'll talk to you guys later.